I don't know about you, but when I first read the story that the Ineos Grenadier was no longer going to be built in the United Kingdom, but was going to be built in France, I had a, I had a bad reaction to it. A bit like, a bit like bad reaction to a, a, a drug that doesn't agree with you or something. I just kind of got a bit, you know, what? What are you doing? What, 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 you know. So, and I made a little video and I posted it just to my Patreon followers. And they came back with some comments, some saying, yeah, and others saying, what on earth are you talking about? Seriously valuable. And I realized that there are two quite distinct arguments on whether it should be or shouldn't be built in France. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and traveling to the remotest parts of the world. So here then is my uh, knee-jerk reaction video. What self-respecting American is going to buy a French car? Sorry, it's a French car. If you build it in France, it's a French car. It's unavoidable. What's Ineos? It's, Ineos is not a car brand. It's becoming a car brand. It is about to become a French car brand. Where you build the Grenadier will establish Ineos as where it comes its origins. It will be this English pub idea is not strong enough. It's not a strong enough story to overcome the fact that it's built in France. Now, if you, and I'm saying you, the, build, the people at, at Ineos, and I know you saw my other videos, if you want to, and even if you don't want to publicly say it, but if your intention was to build the spiritual successor to Defender, you cannot build it in France. It could very well be the death knell of your brilliant, I think, project. You are building a spiritual successor to what was lost when Land Rover stopped building the Defender and the new one was just, and everybody's hearts went, oh, just another SUV, which it is. It's just another SUV. You're not building an SUV. When I read that, you're building it in France, my heart just went, oh, crikey. You've killed it. You've come up with all of these beautiful ideas. You're willing to invest the money. You're willing to do what you're doing. That's risky. It's a small segment of the market. It's small. Fantastically risky. And I, the four-wheel drive community, even those that are not big on Land Rovers, love the idea as much as they love the new Ford Bronco. Why do you think the new Ford Bronco is getting so much press? Because you at Ineos got it right. You realized that there was a market for a real off-roader. Now, let's not, I'm not going to go into the fact that whether the Bronco is or isn't a real off-roader. What they're doing is, they are saying, Ford, there are enough people here that really want to go off-road and they want the character and they want the, well, actually to me, the Ford Bronco is the successor to the Toyota FJ Cruiser. Toyota, you made a big mistake stopping that vehicle. You didn't read the market right. The FJ Cruiser is a fantastic off-road weekender and I imagine the Ford Bronco is probably going to fill its shoes. I will hopefully be able to get my hands on one to be able to do a review of some kind of story about the Bronco. But it says to me that the four-wheel drive market is still alive and kicking. And you at Ineos realized that that was the case as well. And you put your money where your mouth was and you said, yes, we will build a successor to the Defender. 
if you build it in France, it is no longer a successor to the Defender and you will have a small number of people in Europe who will buy it. A few people in the UK, nobody in Australia will even give it a second look. Nobody buys French cars in Australia. You, you see, they are so, they are so uncommon. It's not interested in French cars. Likewise in the United States. So if you build it in France, your market has gone to that. A little pocket, small number of people in Europe and nowhere else. And please live up to your promise. You said you were going to build it in Wales. And a lot of people cheered and said yes. Make it happen in Wales. Keep your promise to the Welsh people because the world will love the idea that a car like this is built in Wales. There's no place better on earth to build a vehicle when it comes to heritage. Build it in France and don't be surprised if it soon becomes known as the French Grenadier. Not sure that that will go down too well with the British car buying public. Okay, that's the one side of it. Okay, the French Grenadier. But here's the other side. Just because it's built in France, will it become a French car? Not necessarily, because many cars are built in France and we don't even know. Do you know that your BMW 3 Series is built in South Africa? It's not a South African car, it's a German car. Yes, INEOS is trying to establish for themselves a, this new mark and this new, you know, I think that INEOS will become a European car if it's not built in the UK. If it's built in the UK, it will become a British car. Do British cars have the best reputation? No. Do French cars have the best reputation? No. Do European cars have the best reputation? I guess so. Better than British and better than just French. So why would they want to no longer build it in the UK? The natural thing I think was to build it in the UK because it's uh, the spiritual uh, successor to the Defender, which it is in a way. So we want him to be British. If you want a spiritual success to the Defender, it has to be British. Do we really want another Defender? How about, I mean, I'm, I remember one guy saying to me, he was driving a Defender and he loved and adored his Defender and he said to me, man, if only Toyota could build this thing. Which thought, made me think, all you want, actually, is you want that, but with Toyota quality. You don't want it to be a Japanese car, you just want Toyota quality. What's wrong with that? So the Grenadier will have European quality. Now I imagine the reason why the bosses there decided that it would be a good idea to build it in France, apart from the fact that there was a factory already owned by Mercedes-Benz and they were doing something and it was available, okay, to start with. But the other thing is, what about building it in the UK? If the United Kingdom doesn't make trade and manufacturing and export friendly to business people, then why would they build it in the UK? Why are fewer and fewer things being built in the UK? Why? There has to be a reason. It's because, surely, it's an unfriendly environment. If it was a friendly environment, you'd have lots and lots of people building things there. This is logical. So the supply chain, they're getting the gearbox, ZF gearboxes are European, BMW engines are European, all of the components are European. Please don't put in British electrics, please. Oh, please. Please don't put in British electrics. So really now, what is left for the... It sounds like if it was made in the UK, 90% of the vehicle will be made in Europe and exported to the UK to be assembled in the UK. Why not just... 
but it's a hearts and mind issue. It is a hearts and mind issue. With the with in, Ineos themselves, I am absolutely sure they are thinking about the hearts and minds, but they are thinking much harder about the business proposition. The fact that we have to build these things, have them built in high quality, and export them, and we need an environment where this is easiest as practically possible. Not more difficult just because it's British. Sure, I wish it would be made in Britain. I do. It would be nice. Sure. It's not a French car. It doesn't make actually one iota where it's built at the end of the day. As long as it's a good car. As long as it's a vehicle that we can use and learn to fall in love with. At the end of the day, surely that's what matters. And that's what's going to determine whether the Grenadier is a success or a failure. Thank you for watching.